Hi guys, welcome back and wish you all a very advanced happy new year 2021. My name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and today we are going to talk about software testing trends of year 2021. It's like a couple of months before we talked about software testing trends of year 2020 and now we are a couple of days away for year 2021. This year 2020 was super fast, I mean it just went like this with full pandemic shutdown, lockdown and everything. I mean, the world has never seen this kind of pandemic event and this year may be written in the history of the mankind that this year was such a bad year probably, at least for human beings. Uh, well, I don't really want to get into that particular details on the uh, world climate change and stuff, but, but yes, this year was really, really bad for the humans. Well, as I said, today we're going to talk about the software testing trends of 2021. In year 2020, we talked about the soft testing trends like this, like rise of .NET and cross-platform support, microservice architecture, the buzzword everyone is talking about, DevOps, JS-based testing frameworks will still grow, and Selenium 4 may be a game changer. So these were top testing trends of year 2020 I listed, and a couple of them were really, really didn't even picked up, like the rise of .NET and cross-platform support. I don't really see any testing uh, happened, and also there was not a huge leap through happened on that particular area. And similarly, uh, the Serenium 4, maybe a game changer, which I told, is still in the alpha stage. Still, Serenium 4 is not yet out, and it is quite slower. I mean, really, really quite slower. So nothing really happened. But the other three things like microservice architecture is really, really growing up. A lot of companies are using microservice architectures, which is really cool. And similarly, DevOps is not for ops anymore. This is another thing which I have put in this year as well. The DevOps is nothing but the QA ops. So it's really, really improving. Similarly, JS-based testing framework are growing a lot enormously, which we'll be talking about that as well. So this was the testing trends of year 2020. And year 2021, I could see these are the testing trends. Test automation, Codeless test automation on RISE, QA ops, IoT testing, robotic process automation. So these are the top five testing trends I see in year 2021. And this is going to be really, really awesome because you could see that from year 2020 to year 2021, so many things have changed. Even the list, the only thing which looks pretty much similar is the test automation as well as the QA ops. But the other three are pretty new and brand new probably. And it's really, really uh, increasing this year. So we are going to talk about these five trends in this video. So if you want to go to a specific uh, trends that to be watched, you can go to the chapters below in this particular video. You can click that and you can watch the video directly instead of just watching the whole video if you really don't want to. So test automation. I mean, test automations are now adapted like never before. I mean, this year in 2020, the pandemic is really creeping up. I mean, a lot of companies are asking all the employees to working from home and stuff. And we could able to see that the automation is still really, really rising. And a lot of companies are doing a lot of automation these days. And automation testing, like all the companies are going to realize that these automation testing has to be there in place for faster delivery of software. The more they invest the time on implementing the automation testing uh, frameworks and tools and process, the better they get the result quickly. Companies right now know that. And similarly, modern application development and technologies are already coming up with modern testing practices like Vue.js, AngularJS, and React.js. So if you could see these modern application development, they actually know that there should be uh, best testing practices in place. They automatically generate the IDEs and everything which is required for the automation testing tools, which is really cool. So these are things which is really amazing to see in the automation testing world. It is really increasing. A lot of companies are really going to adapt even in 2021. So this year, 2021, you can see that a lot of companies are really going to go into the test automation area to improve the testing process and trend. And the classical tests are being replaced by the modern testing. So uh, testing tools all these days like Selenium and QTP and Test Complete and all those tools that you have taken so far, you have learned so far, these testing tools rely on only a few things like going to an UI operation, performing an UI operation like clicking the button or entering some text on that and doing an assertion. 
just been replaced into like performance monitoring and resource loading time, intercepting the networks, getting the application errors from the console log level, and similarly testing on the various environment levels and speed and stuff. So all these things are now being improved with the power of the new automation testing tools like Cypress, Playwright, Puppeteer. So they directly intercept the network and also they can get the whole details of the Chrome DevTools and you can do almost everything right from these tools, which is amazing. So these tools are really, really doing much, much better than what so-called legacy Selenium can never ever able to do all those things. This is amazing. So these are the modern things that we need to be testing, modern aspect of testing an application, and these are happening right now. So the tools to watch for this year, I would say there are three tools which really, really is very, very interesting. One is Playwright. Playwright is really changing the landscape of how the automation testing or the JavaScript based automation testing tool used to be because Playwright is a part of Microsoft. I mean, it's really cool to see that Playwright has a lot of language binding these days. I mean, in three or four months, I could see that Playwright has got language binding support of Go language, Java, C sharp and Python and originally you know that Playwright is for JavaScript and TypeScript, but now these language supports are there, which is really cool. So this tool should be the tool to watch for this year, 2021. And then Cypress. So Cypress, we all know that is really growing up as well. I mean, they now support cross browsers and they also do a lot of support in terms of extensibility and everything. But yes, this tool is also something you need to watch. And Yentest. I mean, this tool is something like a codeless automation testing tool. It has almost everything. We'll talk about the codeless automation testing tool in the next slide. But yes, this tool is something you need to watch as well. It's really cool to uh, see these tools are really emerging. The next trend is codeless test automation. So codeless test automation was not even a thing before. I mean, if, if you have watched my earlier videos, I would have told that the record and playback is not even a thing for automation testing. It is just to generate the script and stuff. But now, the companies are trying to take this approach a level further, like test team or test project and end test. They are trying to make this cordless automation much, much better, much more sophisticated by bringing many different uh, aspects which a classical testing uh, framework that we build within our in-house premises. Something like they address some of the pain points that we always have in our, in our automation practices. Like if we build any automation testing, we always build a framework and then we start building up something like parallel test support, continuous integration support, and then, you know, the, you know, reporting supports and stuff. But if we use cordless automation testing tool, which is, like, which is more like a service and they have a very secure uh, way of connecting, like tunneling to the corporate networks and stuff. They also support auto healing and they are framework agnostic and they are very, very cheap and easy to maintain as well. So these things are really uh, making the scoreless automation testing tool more adaptable. So recently I was reading an article from the Microsoft team that they are actually using end test for running few of their tests. And similarly, I could also see that uh, companies like test project, they have already open sourced their SDK as open SDK. And they're also op open sourcing the execution that you can run the test from your local machine and you can see the report on their platforms. So which is really cool. And test team is an AI based tool. It's also rising. And also they have open source a lot of pieces uh, like free so you can just use it and try it out and see how it actually works. So these things are really cool to see cordless automation is also rising in a level further right now. And this is definitely uh, the place where the auto healing in 2020 was really improved a lot, like a lot of testing tools like Test Project, Catalan Studio, Testim, they all brought this uh, auto healing feature, like they automatically resolve if there is any fragile uh, UI locators, but those things may be improved even further uh, like with the vision APIs and also with the uh, test team's own uh, in-house AI can improve the way they can automatically heal the UI elements are going to be improving even further. And you could see that a lot of magics happen in year 2021. I really think that 2021 is going to be a game changer for cordless automation. And this is going to be reducing the testing time as much as possible. And the next trend is the QA ops. So, QA should play a DevOps role. I mean, this is really cool because nowadays, not just 
uh, testers are uh, involved in just for QA uh, functionality, but they're also involved in uh, in the applications uh, architecture uh, discussions. They're also involved in the deployment of the applications and also testing the application in various uh, various ecosystems or environments. So this is really cool to see that QA will be acting as an uh, ops to deploy the applications and testing the applications in different ecosystems because there is a vast scale of uh, ecosystems coming up. So QA must be doing that. And this slide I've actually taken from year 2020 and it's pretty much exactly the same thing. So so you can see that it's, it's never changed. I mean, QA are really, really uh, going into this particular area. So definitely this is a great place to watch as well. And the next trend is the robotic process automation or RPA in short. So there are many tools available in RPA as well, like Microsoft Flow, a UiPath and Automate Anywhere. I mean, you can keep naming it. There are many different uh, tools which are doing it. I mean, I have just put some of the few in there. And even if you could see in our phones, like in iPhones, there is something called as Apple shortcut uh, in Apple phones, which actually does exactly the same thing. I mean, just reduce babysitting operation that we always used to do. And they try to automate that particular process, which is pretty cool. Like the Apple's shortcut, try to reduce your, uh, your workflow. Like if you go reach uh, to maybe some place, you always, if you are sending a message to your client that you have reached this place, you could probably try doing the uh, Apple shortcut, you can tell them that if you reach this location, send a text to this person and also send an email to this person, something like that. You can just automate that in Apple shortcut, just like few clicks. That's one of the, uh, one of the process automation. Similarly, the Microsoft flow and UI path and everything is actually one of the uh, process automation for a big corporate business. So you can see that every company or corporations running like thousands or millions of operations per day or per week. And most of the operations are done by computers or mobile devices. But there are many instances where these process needs to be manually fed to a system which can then process further operation. For example, airport, banking, multinational corporations, hospital. These are like performing a lot of complex operation behind the scene like back office who are doing so many different operations but these process are still manual so they have to be automated as well using some tool and this rpa or robotic process automation is really really coming handy to make these operation happens which is amazing and we can just uh, take one of the example let's say airport like if you want to keep feeding all the information like how many flights come in and how many bags have been checked in even though it's all computerized some of the things like the people who are standing on the ground they try to enter some details on their computers or or, or on their cell phones like pdas but actually they have to feed some of the things like bit of things are still manual uh, which has to be entered into the system as well and i have been working into the bank and i could see that some of my managers they used to do some babysitting works and uh, that really requires automation which they are doing it from rpa as well and yes that's amazing so rpa tools are also increasing and this is one of the most important thing which is going to be improving it's amazing to see that this automation is gonna play a key role in year 2021. The last trend of year 2021 is the IoT testing. I mean, IoT is now in every part of the life. I mean, I've been using the IoT devices for like a couple of years or more than that now. Like my home is actually automated using the automated switch and it has the automated uh, plugs, automated lights, and automated uh, TV controls, Alexa's and Siri. So all these are actually doing few automation and they are doing a few interconnectivity between each of them. And with the availability of 5G, you could see that these devices are gonna be growing even further. I mean, these devices are not just taken into this home automation, but you can see that these devices like in manufacturing industries or in petroleum in industries where they have a lot of grids and rigs which are running. We don't really have to require a full manual intervention of the controls on these sensors. Uh, well, they are 
currently being monitored by the automated uh, solutions like IoT devices, which takes care of most of these processes. And automating these devices will be amazing. I mean, IoT device testing really requires a lot of testing and it is really important to see that these devices uh, will have not only uh, the issues with the security because it is exposed to the open world, but also the availability and performance and what are the way that we can test these particular devices during a specific conditions. So IoT device testing is also one of the key thing uh, to watch in year 2021. So you could see that this year 2021 looks pretty interesting than compared to last year. Not very classical way of testing exists. It's all changing. Maybe year 2022 is going to be even more uh, amazing with a lot of new trends and techniques. Uh, but definitely 2021 is amazing in terms of testing. So thank you once again for watching this video. Just put your comments on thoughts on what are the things that you really think that needs to be included uh, in the testing trends of year 2021. I could probably add them as well, but I could definitely see that year 2021 is amazing in terms of these tech. But if I'm missing anything, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching this video. Once again, you guys have a great new year 2021. Meet you in the next one. Thank you.